BFS stands for Breath First Search. It's a way of exploring or searching a connected set of objects, such as graph or tree, by checking all of the objects at the same level before moving to the next level. Think of BFS as like searching in a big room by first checking all of the objects close around you before moving to objects slightly further away, so on. Let's do an example here. We're gonna put one in queue and we're gonna put one to visit it. Whenever we add something to the queue, we're also gonna add it in visited. We're gonna remove the first element of the queue. That is our current element, which is one. One has a one child, which is two. We check that two is not in visited. So we're gonna add two in visited and add two to the queue. We're going to remove from the queue. We'll be at two. Two is connected to eight, three, and six. We check that eight is not in visited. So we're going to add eight, add eight. Three is not in visited. Add three, add three. Remember, always add to the back. Add six, add six. Okay, remove from the front, eight. Here we see that eight is connected to two, but we, two is already in the visited queue, so we don't need to do anything here. We're gonna remove three on the front. Here we see that three is connected to seven. We have not visited seven. We have not visited four. That's connected to six. However, we see that six is in our visited. The reason why we add to visited before we visit a node is because if we don't do that, an element may be inside the queue and not in visited and we would have added six here. Next, we're gonna remove six. Six is connected to, but we have already visited two. Six is connected to four. We're going to visit four already. Six is connected to five. So we are not visiting five yet. So let me add five. Seven is connected to three, but we can see that three is already in visited. Next, we're gonna visit four. We can see that four connects to three and six. Both are in visited, so we're gonna do nothing here. And finally, we're going to visit 5. And once again, 5 is related to 6, but 6 is already visited. And there we go. We have visited every single element inside of this graph. In some cases, such as a binary tree where we have a node, and the node has a node.left, node.right, and the node does not know its parents, we actually don't need to keep track of visited. The reason is because one can go to two, one can go to three, but three cannot go to one. It can no not visit its parents. This guarantee that we're only going to visit each node once. There are two important properties you should remember about binary search. One is that since we visit every node once, the runtime of the algorithm is ON, so it's very efficient. Second, the path from the starting node to every node you reach will always be a path with the shortest distance. This property is this property is the reason why breadth first search is always used for shortest distance questions. Let's start with an easy question, path sum. Given the root of a binary tree and an integer target sum, return true if the tree has a root to leaf path such that adding up all the values along the path equals target sum. What this means is basically we want to check if there's a path from root to leaf. So this, 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 that equals to a target sum. And if root is none, we're going to return false that we can't find anything that equals target sum. As you can see here, the structure of the node, it only has left and right. It has no access to its parents. In this case, we can only go in one direction. So there's no need for a visited set. We're going to add to the front and pop from the back. We're going to add root to the queue and record the value. This will increase as we go down a certain path. We're going to get the current node and the current sum along the path. If the node has a child on the left, we will append the queue a pair. The pair contains the node's left child and the current sum plus the node's left child's value. We will do the same for the node's right child. If the node has no left child and no right child, this means that the node is a leaf node. In this case, if the current sum equals to the target sum, then we found a path from root to a leaf that equals to the target sum, and we return true. If we finish running through the queue without finding a path from the root to the leaf that equals to the target sum, we return false.
You have a lock in front of you with four cellular wheels. Each wheel has 10 slots, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The wheels can rotate freely and wrap around. For example, you can turn 9 to 0 or 0 to be 9. Each move consists of turning one wheel, one slot. The lock initially starts at four zeros, a string representing the state of four wheels. You're given a list of dead ends. Dead ends means if the lock display any of these codes, the wheel of the lock will stop turning and you'll be unable to open it. Give a target representing the value of the wheels that will unlock the lock. Return the minimum total of number of turns to open the lock, or negative one if it's impossible. For example, here we have a bunch of dead ends. Basically, if we reach these, uh, we can't do anything. So make sure we don't reach these. And the target is 0201. And a sequence of valid move from 00 to the target would be 00 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 1, blah, 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 until we reach 1, 2, uh, 0, 2, 0, 2. You see here we did this because we want to avoid the dead end over here. Oh, I really like this question because I had no idea that you can use breadth first search to solve this. But after I've done it, it makes a lot of sense. Essentially, every turn to the next combination is like a node to another node, and this forms a graph. If we find that 0, 0, the beginning position is in dead ends, well, that's impossible, so we return negative 1. We're going to have a queue, and inside each element of the queue, it contains the current combination and the current number of rotations. Here we need a visited set. The reason is because we can go from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1 can also go to 0, 0, 0. In this case, we need to make sure we do not visit a node we have previously visited. We're going to turn the dead ends from a list to a set to make it more optimized. We're going to turn the dead ends from a list to a set to speed up the lookup operation. We're going to get the current combination and the current number of turns. If the current combination equals target, we know that we were able to unlock it, and we're going to return the number of turns. Here we use the property of breadth first search, where the first time we reach a target will always be the shortest path. Here we're going to use a function called nextNums that we're going to call the function nextNums later to generate all the possible numbers the current combination can reach. We're going to go through every single number that a current number can reach. If that number is in visited or it's in dead ends, we're going to skip it. If we have not visited yet, we're going to add it to the visit set and add it to the back of the visit queue. Here, we bump up the number of turns by one. If we reach the end without reaching the target combination, that means it's impossible. Here, we're going to return negative one. Next, we're going to build the helper function for generating every single pattern that our current node can reach. Here, for every single digit inside num, we're going to add one and subtract one. In total, we are going to have two times four, eight possible combinations. As we mentioned before, it's possible to do a rollover. So we're going to check if the number reaches a rollover or not with a helper function. The current number is negative one, we change that to nine. And if the current number is 10, we change that to zero. If you want to find a target or multiple targets with the shortest distance, BFS is the way to go.